Oh, hey, John, how you doing, man? Hey, Tim, how are you? That's a more or less accurate rendition of the first eight bars of Irving Berlin's How Deep is the Ocean, which is the subject of our, of our short lesson here, the first eight bars. Right, what we thought we would do um, for our viewership is to take a tune that we both love and we both play uh, called How Deep is the Ocean and um, talk about for a solo guitar uh, rendition, how we might put together something. Uh, and the basic changes are quite simple. My approach is to add a fair amount of bass movement so that I can propel the thing. Um, and then we can see how, how it differs uh, with John's approach. So here's my way of doing it. <laughs> you're doing is ideal for a solo arrangement. If you were playing in a group with bass and drums or a duo with bass, maybe you'd be a little less inclined to play so much bass movement because the bass is doing that for you. All right. And it's interesting to know sometimes that the context has a lot to do with how we choose our inversions and our voicing. It's Pianistic classic. sound, and we both have access to hybrid picking or a thumb and fingers. Mm -hmm. That allows us to separate out the notes and then play a note and then move things below that note to suggest the color of the chord. And in some cases, that's a relatively simple thing to do physically. So if we can just see some of these shapes. So if I'm going. So in that, in that case, I thought of that as a, like a, a tritone. So I was thinking D flat seven on the way back to C. All I did is to make that, that sound apparent is just put that C sharp in the bass instead of a G in the bass. These are things you do all the time too. So it's a pretty easy move just to grab a note in the bass and really change how that progression is moving, but still ultimately resolving back to the C minor. We have all these different strategies to, for, for turnarounds. They come from two. <laughs> you know, oh yeah, I like that. <laughs> you know, and then so there's just so many ways. Uh, I think that's probably what I love about solo guitar is that there's a kind of meditative depthfulness that we can get into with it if we're uh, you know if we have our chops together and we have our knowledge together um that is it might be a little lonely but it's also allows you to really you know go deep into whatever you're uh exploring without the input and distraction of somebody else's idea you know 